Hello, let's take a look at what we will create for this project. We're going to create this analog clock from scratch. So we'll be creating the face of the clock, the numbers on the clock, the clock hand, and also starting the clock. So we're going to be using Canvas, HTML Canvas, and JavaScript. So look forward to showing you how this is done. Thank you. Bye for now. Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to create the project directory and also the HTML file for the project. I have already created the directory, which is this. If I click, you can see the directory is empty. And the way to create a directory is fairly simple. There are several ways, but the way I did it, I just did a right click on my desktop. I clicked on new folder and just gave the folder a name. In this case, I gave it analog clock. So you can create directory the same way on a Mac and on a window. Next thing I want to do is create the HTML file and I will be using the sublime text editor. So this is my editor. I've already got a file open. I just need to save the blank file as an HTML file. So I'm going to go file, save as, is saving it into my directory and I'm going to call it clock lowercase dot html that means anything in there will be an html file and then in this drop down here I can leave that blank or I can just select that and click save so you can see the title has changed to clock dot html and you can see on the bottom right here is also got HTML. So which means any code inside here will be treated as HTML. To save time, I've already pre-staged the HTML code. I'm just going to add that in and I'll explain it line by line. So this is the code I'm going to use for the HTML. So let me run through that with you. Line one is the doc type. The doc type is a declaration. This is usually the very first thing in your HTML document before the actual HTML tag. The doc type is not actually an HTML tag. It is an instruction to the web browser about what version of HTML the page is written in. Line two is the beginning of the HTML tag. Line 15 is the closing HTML tag. So any content between line two and 15 is treated as HTML. Okay, so line three is the head, beginning of the head section, and line six is the closing head tag. So in between the head tag line four, we've got a link to the CSS style sheet we are going to use. Uh, I've not created a style sheet yet, but when I do, I'm going to call it clock.css. So this is an external link, which means that the CSS will be on a separate file, but we're going to reference it from this uh, file here, this HTML document. And here I've given the title to the actual document. Um, this is called analog clock. So I see opening title, closing title, and this closes the head section. So the, any code or tag you've got in the head section is not, this is not a visible content, uh, apart from the title that shows on the actual title bar. So here we have the body. The body is actually the content that is displayed. So any content within the body tag is what the visitor to the web page or application sees. Line 10, I've defined the canvas here. We've got a canvas with an ID of canvas. So that's the ID attribute. And we've given the canvas a width. So this is going to be how wide it's going to be. And this is how high in height it's going to be. And that is the closing canvas. So canvas are tags, so you can open and close them just like other HTML tags. Here on line 12, 
I've got a script tag and I've got a source, SRC basically stands for source. So basically is referencing where the script is. The source is what you use to reference the script. So what this is saying that this script here is going to be located inside a file called clock.js. I've not created this file yet, but I will later. And that file will contain all our code, JavaScript code, that will make the analog clock work. Okay, and this is a closing body tag, and that's a closing HTML tag. So that's basically it for this HTML document. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to create the canvas object. In our previous video, in our HTML file, we added the HTML canvas element to the page using this tag here. So now we're going to create a new file, which is going to be a JavaScript file. So I'm going to click on the file option and click new. And I'm going to save that file as a clock. I'm going to call it clock.js. And inside this drop down here, I'll just select this JavaScript option and click save. So we now have a JavaScript file and an HTML file. So let's create a canvas object and we're going to use a variable to do that. So here we created a canvas object from the HTML canvas element. So you can see we're using the document or get element by ID and the ID is canvas, which is this here from the HTML element. All right. So here we have now created a canvas object. The next thing we're going to do, we are going to create a 2D drawing object. Again, we're going to use a variable. So on line two here, we've got a variable called CTX. CTX basically stands for context. So we're setting that to equals to canvas.getContext and inside we're passing it 2D. So this will create a 2D drawing object for the canvas object. Next thing I want to do is calculate the clock radius using the height of the canvas. So to calculate the clock radius using the height of the canvas, we add a variable called radius and set that to equals to the canvas dot height divided by two. By using the canvas height to calculate the clock radius, it makes the clock work for all canvas sizes. So regardless of the size of your canvas, the clock should work. The next line of code I want to add basically is going to remap the position, which is the X and Y axis. It's going to remap them. Um, so that which is going to be the actual position of the drawing object. So it's going to remap it to the center of the canvas. So we're using the CTX, which is this variable here, this variable here, dot translate, and we're passing it. We've got the radius and the radius. Basically what this will do, it will remap the position zero and zero. So zero will be on the X axis and zero on the Y axis. So it remaps it to position the drawing object at the center of the canvas. The next thing I want to do is I want to reduce the clock radius to about 90%. So to draw the clock so that the clock, when the clock is drawn, it is drawn inside the canvas. The next thing I want to do is create a function that will be used to draw the clock. To save time, I have added the function 
that will be used to draw the face of the clock. So this is a function here. So to create a function, you type in the keyword function, followed by the name you want to call the function. So I've called the function draw clock. When creating functions, it's always good idea to name the function to reflect the work or what the function will do. And the curly braces is the actual code that will be responsible for drawing the face of the clock. So here we've got the context.arc. The .arc method basically is used to create an arc or a curve which is used to create circles or parts of the circle. And inside the parentheses for this arc method, we've got different um, arguments or parameters. So this basically is used to draw the actual arc of the circle and position it. And notice here we've got the radius and also we've got the math.py. Um, basically, the mass.py property represents the ratio of the circumference of the circle to the diameter of the circle. So mass.py property represents the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter, which is approximately 3.1415. Five nine. On line ten here, we've got a context dot fill style, and we're giving it a color of white. Basically, this is the color that will be used to fill the face of the circle that is being drawn by this clock. So the actual face of the clock is going to be white, and we're achieving that using this method called context. Dot fill star. This fill star method is what gives the clock a white face background. You can specify any, but in this case, I've just used white. You can also use the context of fill style um, property to return the color, the gradient, or a pattern you use in filling the drawing. On line 11, we've got the fill method. Basically, this is used to fill the current path of the drawing. So it fills the current drawing path and the default color is black. When you create a function, for the function to do its job, you have to call it or reference it. So you can see here on line six, I've added a reference to this clock. So it's going to draw the, I'm calling the function here. It's going to draw this clock, draw the face of the clock here inside this place. This, you can call a function from anywhere, but I'm calling it from here. So when this code, when this lines of code are read and it comes here, it will then draw the clock using all, using this, um, code in between the curly braces. Okay, so next thing I want to do, I've actually done it, but I'm just going to tell you why I, I created a CSS file here. So basically the file, you create the file the same way. You go to file, new, new file, and then save it into your relevant um, directory. So basically it's a basic styling. I'm styling the body. I'm giving the actual body the background color of black. This is black in hex value. And the canvas, I'm positioning the canvas. I want the canvas to be positioned in a certain way. So I want there to be some margin from the left and I'm giving the value of 300 pixels. And I want there to be a margin from the top. I'm giving it 50 pixels. Basically I'm saying from the left, move it to 300 pixels and from the top, move it down 50 pixels. So I'm going to save that. And now we can test the clock. So this is a clock. So you should get something like this. This is the actual face of the clock. So if you can see something like this, then congratulations. We are on the same page. So that's basically it for this lecture. We've got 
a few more functions to go um, to get the clock working properly. So thanks for watching. Bye for now. Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to be drawing the clock face. This will involve modifying the code we had in our previous lecture. So this is where we left off in the previous lecture. We created a function called draw clock. I'm going to actually modify this function. Um, what I'm going to do is also create another function called draw face. And we're going to reference that function from inside this draw clock function. So I'm going to modify this function here. I'll get rid of all this and just the other function I'm going to create is going to be a function called draw face. So I'm just going to reference that function here. I've not created it yet. I'm going to create it very shortly. And for the inside the parentheses, I'm going to pass in the CTX and the radius. Okay. All right. So now let's create this function here called draw face. So I have added the block of code for this new function called draw face. And that's the function we are referencing from the draw clock function, which is a function that we, I have modified. So I'm just going to run through this block of code with you so that we'll know what's happening here. So inside the draw face function, we've got two parameters called the context and got the radius. And in between the curly braces, this is the opening curly braces and this is the closing curly braces contains the code that will draw the face for the clock. So we've got a variable called grad. This is going to be for the gradient. And then we've got the this code here is from line 14 to line 17. This block of code here is going to draw the actual white circle for the face. So here we've got on line 14, we've got the begin path. The begin path method basically begins a path or can be used to reset the current path. So this is where the actual path begins and line 14 here, we're using the arc method to actually draw the white, the circle. And these are the parameters that will enable that to happen. This is a math.py. I explained what that was in our previous lecture and also explained what the fill style does. So it just gives it um, the white face or the background. And the, I also explained what the context.fill method. So the context of fill method basically fills the current drawing path. On line 18 here, we're using this variable we created here on line 13 called grad. Um, basically, we are creating a radial gradient which is 95% and 105% of the original clock radius. Line 19 to line 21, basically we're creating three color stops um, corresponding with the inner, the middle, and the outer edge of the arc. Okay, so these colors here, represents the inner, the middle and outer edge of the arc, which is from line 19 to line 21. And just to know that this color stop here, the color stop basically is used to create a 3D effect. Next on line 22 here, I am defining the gradient as the stroke style of the drawing object. Line 23, I am defining the line width 
of the drawing object which is here which will be 10% of the radius line 24 we're using the stroke method to draw the circle and we're using the block of code from line 25 to line 28 to draw the actual clock center so it will draw a center for the clock anywhere you see the begin path method basically means there's a path going on here it, this is the beginning and then it will end with the fill here so this block of code here 25 to 28 is used to draw the actual center for the clock so that is basically it so i'm just going to save this and we go back to our HTML. So double click on the clock.html and hopefully there you go. So this is exactly how I want it to be. So this is the actual center of the clock. So we now have a face for our clock. So in the next lecture, we will create the function that will be used for the clock numbers. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to create a function that will draw the clock numbers. So this is what our code looks like at the moment. And this is what we've been able to achieve so far. So by the end of this lecture, we should have clock numbers on the clock. So what I'm going to do, I've already pre-staged the code. I'm going to add the block of code and do my best to explain what the code does. So just underneath and it, you can call a function from anywhere. If you notice this draw clock function here um, is inside that function. We're also calling this draw face function. And uh, we're going to create a function called draw numbers. And again, we're going to add that here. In fact, let me do that now. I'm just going to call this draw numbers. And uh, inside the parentheses, I'm going to also reference the seat context and the radius. So this is going to be a function that I'm going to create in a minute. But well, I'm referencing it inside this clock. So when this clock function draw clock runs, it will call this and then call this function. So I'm just going to tap down to the bottom of this last function here and just add the block of code for our draw numbers function. So I've added a block of code that will draw the numbers on the clock. So this is the clock code here. This is a block of code. So I'll do my best to run through it with you. So we've got a couple of variables here, a variable called ang and a variable called num. Uh, we've on line 36, basically we are setting the font size of the drawing object to be 15% of the radius. That's what this line 36 does line 37 and 38 is used to set the text alignment to the middle and the center of the print position and for the rest of the code from line 39 to 47 we are calculating the print position for 12 numbers to 85% of the radius. And um, we're going to have that rotated. And we've got the PY divided by six. So here we've got the mass of PY property here divided by six for each of the numbers of the clock. So these are various um, methods here. We, so we're using the rotate method and we're passing in this variable ang yeah which is responsible for the angle and we're using the translate method here as also as i explained in previous video the translate basically is used to remap 
the position on the X and Y axis of the canvas. And here we are line 43, we rotating using the rotate method again. This time we're using a negative value here. Notice on 41 is a positive and 43 we're using a negative value. And then we 44, we're using the fill text. This is what will actually put the text on the clock. And we're referencing the number variable and we're converting it to string. Okay, and these are the values. Again here, 45, we're referencing the rotate method using the variable we defined on line 34. We're using the translate again here with these values here. And again, we're using the rotate method with a negative for this variable. So that basically should create the numbers for the clock. So I'm just going to save this and click save all. And we can go back to our HTML and see what it looks like. Okay, the numbers have not showed up, so there must be a slight error in the code. So I'm just going to go back into the code and have a look what I may have done wrong. So let me take a look. The function is called draw numbers. Let me see. All right, okay, this is where my error is. Um, the function is called draw numbers, and I've just called it draw numbers, so obviously it will not run, so I need to add the S. I'll save that and try and run, refresh the clock again and see. Excellent. So now we have the numbers showing up on the face of the clock. Oh, that's excellent. So if you are on the same page and you've got yours working also, many congratulations. In the next lecture, we're going to create a function that will be used to draw the hand for the clock. So thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to be drawing the time and the hands for the analog clock. So this is what our project looks like at the moment. And this is the code we have so far got. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add a function that will be used to generate or create the time for the clock. So this will include adding some variables or so we need to use the date um, to get the hour the minute and the second. So I've added this function here from line 51 to 68. This is the function that will be responsible for drawing the time. So here we've got, we've defined the function here called draw time. And inside the parentheses, we are referencing these two par parameters, the context and the radius. Here we've got some variables. So we're using the date to get the hour, the minute and the second. So this here we've got variable called now, which will display the current date and variable hour, which will give us hours. So we're doing the now dot get hours. We're referencing this variable now, but getting the hours here again, we're using the variable this variable called now to get the minutes and get the seconds. So this block here, these are just variables that will get the current time now, the the hours, the minutes and the second. And the rest of the block of code here, basically we're going to use, we're going to calculate the angle of the hour hand and draw it a length, which is going to be 50% of the radius and a width, which is going to be 7% of the radius. So the same technique is used for the minutes and the seconds. So this block of code here 
calculates the angle of the hour hand and also draws it a length which is going to be 50% of radius and the width of 7% of radius. So I'm applying the same technique for the minutes and for the seconds. So I have to include this function inside the draw clock method or draw clock function. So I just copy that and go to where the draw clock function is and just include that. So we've got the draw clock function. So I just come down here and add that. So this is the function that will reference the other functions. Okay, so the next function I am going to add on is going to be the function that will draw the actual hands for the so I've now added the function to draw the hand. If you notice in this function here called draw time, we already made reference to this function here. So we can see here, we've got the draw hand here, we've got the draw hand here and we we'll draw hand here. So we've already referenced this function. So there's no need to add this function to the draw clock function because we are referencing it inside the draw time function. So quickly, I'll just run through what the draw hand is doing here. Inside this draw hand function, we've got this parameters here inside the parentheses. We've got the context, we've got the position, the length and the width. So these are all parameters that are passed into this draw hand function. So again, we've got the begin path, which is the actual start of the path. So this basically is where the drawing begins. And then we've got the line width. This represents the line of the width of the hand. And we're setting that to the width. We've got the line cap and we're setting that to the line cap property basically is used to set or return the style of the end caps for a line. Um, the value round and square make the lines slightly longer. So in this case, we've used the value round. So here we've got the move method uh, basically represents how you want the hand to move. So the default value here, we've got zero, zero here, which represent position on the X and Y coordinates. And here we've got the rotate method. We're passing in the position. Okay. And here on line 78, we've got the line two basically represents the line two. The line two method adds a new point and creates a line to that point from the last specified point in the canvas. Um, the key thing to know that this method does not draw the line. The stoke method is actually used to draw the path on the canvas. So we've got the move to, we basically, um, this method represents how the hand of the clock moves. And uh, we've got the rotate. Again, this is responsible in that inside the parenthesis, we passed it the parameter of position. So it will rotate based on the position. And here we've got the line two. Um, we've already covered what the line two is. And then the stroke, the stroke is actually, this stroke method actually draws the path on the canvas. So the actual drawing of the line will be done using the stroke method. Again, we're using the rotate method to um, do the positioning because we passed in the position here. We notice here we've set it to equals to position. So here we've got negative position, also a negative length. So which means it will go in the opposite direction. So that is basically the functions that will create the time, draw the time, and also the hand for the clock. 
So I'm just going to save that, go file, save all, and then we can check it out in our, inside our browser and just see, excellent. So you can see we've got our hand, but the clock is not moving. So we need to create a clock start method that will be used to start the clock. So we've got everything in place. We've got the numbers, we've got the hand. We just need the clock to start. In order for us to start the clock, we need to call the draw clock function at intervals. So we need to set the intervals for the draw clock functions to run or to start. So we're going to modify the draw clock function. To start the clock, we need to modify um, where we're calling the clock from and also change set the interval. So here on line six, where we've got the draw clock, we are going to change this block of code. So here I've changed the line six. So I'm using calling the set interval method. So this is what will be responsible for starting the clock. And we can see here the interval is 1000 milliseconds, which is equivalent to um, one second. So this basically will allow the clock to start. Every second, the clock will be ticking. So that's what this is. This is in milliseconds. So that is how the set interval method works. So the draw clock will be called for each 1000 milliseconds intervals. So I saved this change. I should, we should get the clock working now. So let's go back to the clock. I'm just going to refresh. And you can see the clock ticking which is uh, referencing the current time on my computer. Excellent. So if you've got your clock working, many, many congratulations. If you've got any issues, um, just take a look at the code again or just um, send me a message. I'll be more than happy to assist. So congratulations and take care.